Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. You know the rest. Um, listen, I've uh, been thinking about this great reset thing by the World Economic Forum. You know, all these rich, rich, rich people. I got a picture of Biden with uh, the founder of the World Economic Forum. They're all puppets. Um, the reason they got to do the Great Reset and cancel everybody's debt and start over, so to speak. Uh, now, please understand, I took economics in college. I took uh, macro and micro economics 101 and 102. No, I'm not an expert on economics. I'll admit I'm not. But I do have a basic understanding. But they've been printing money like crazy. And the thing is, when you had gold coins, $20 gold coins, you know, it was basically almost an ounce of gold, I think it was 90% gold, one ounce of 90% gold for $20. Back then, you could have bought a brand new Ford, I think it was, was a Model T, I think it was, for $500. My dad bought his first house, uh, I forget what year, it was either in the late, late 40s or the early 50s. For $8,000. And when you had a one ounce of 90% silver, that was a $1 coin. Back then, you could have bought 20 candy bars. Uh... I don't remember exactly. Let me let me look up some prices real quick. A Whopper in 1960 cost about 37 cents. Yeah. I remember now Burger King was uh from Miami. That was their headquarters. I remember in the mid to late 60s I would get a Whopper a shake and a fry, hand them a dollar and get back about 35 cents in change. Yeah. But you got to remember, they're just printing money now. How much is a Whopper shake and a fry now? I, I don't know. I don't eat that garbage. But uh, in 1976, I bought my first car. I bought a used Volkswagen for about... $2,000. What does a car cost now for a Volkswagen? I uh, I don't know. A Bug, a Beetle, whatever they call them. Of course, they don't make them anymore. But, you know, a car now is like fifteen dollars to $20,000. I wouldn't buy a Kia or a Hyundai. But, uh, you know, a decent Toyota or a Honda. You know, about eighteen grand. So, it's called inflation. The value of, uh, it does, it's, they want you to think that the price of goods is going up. No. It's the value of the money is going down. There is no gold, there is no silver backing the money anymore. It's just a piece of paper, which is basically a promise of the government. It's basically a promise. And you don't even have that anymore. Now you just got uh, digits on a computer screen. But let's say you bought a house for, oh, I don't know, $200,000. For example, like 10 years ago. And you owe $150,000 on it. And we have what is called hyperinflation. Now, 
hyperinflation is generally considered where the prices of goods go up very fast in a very short period of time. Germany, prior to Hitler, had experienced this. There was, you'd buy something one day and it's a hundred of something. The next day it costs 200. Three days later, it's a thousand of whatever. So let's say we have what's called hyperinflation. And it costs, you know, well, the wages go up too, but not in comparison what the price of goods are. So if you owed $150,000 and it cost $50,000 for a cup of coffee, well, just don't go to Starbucks for three days and then pay your house off, right? Wrong. Mortgages have what's called, well, they can call the loan. In other words, there's a provision in the banks. You know, when you're playing the bank's game, you're going to lose every stinking time. You know, you're playing their game. So when we start having hyperinflation, they'll just send you a thing saying, hey, you owe us $150,000. you got to pay us today or by tomorrow $150,000 or we're going to take the house. Because they don't want to have hyperinflation and then you're able to pay off your house with uh, inflated money that's, you know, basically worthless. There was a joke running around Germany uh, when they were having hyperinflation in between World War I and World War II that somebody took a wheelbarrow full of money and was going to the grocery store. But he couldn't get the wheelbarrow through the grocery store uh, doors. So he left it outside and he went in to go uh, shop. When he came out, Somebody had taken, stolen the wheelbarrow, but they had dumped all the money on the, the uh, sidewalk because the wheelbarrow was worth a lot more than the wheelbarrow full of money. And it really wasn't a joke. So they're going to have to do the Great Reset, wipe out everybody's debt, and start over because, well, they don't want you paying off your house with hyperinflated money. And they, you know, could call the loan. So they're going to have to, you know, package up the devil's gift to you with a fancy gift wrap and a nice bow and say, look what we're going to do. We're going to wipe out all your debt. And everybody's going to be like, yeah, that sounds great. But, uh, you know, everybody's going to think, oh, wow, basic universal income. And, you know, they're going to put us in a free... Uh, apartment building to live in or what have you you know because they don't want to call everybody's loans in and then have people saying oh I lost my house I've got nothing else to lose they don't want them to grab their rifles and go down to the bank you know they do not want that absolutely not And trust me, the police departments, the major police departments for since the days of uh, Clinton, they've been, uh, the military has been giving them uh, military hardware. And I'm not just talking about rifles. I'm talking about uh, armored personnel carriers. You know, they're armored vehicles with uh, machine guns on top and cannons. I mean, it's not a tank. But still, it's a, it's a formidable thing against a civilian population. And, I, and, you know, that's how the police look at us in the military. Oh, you're civilians. You're not part of us. You're civilians. We're the police. We're the military. You're civilians. You're them. This is us. Really, it's a shame they got that mindset because we're citizens. 
citizens, not civilians, but, you know, it's all in the words. So they don't want you paying off your house with hyperinflated money. So they're just going to wipe out everybody's debt. And, uh, oh, we're going to start all over. Yeah, you're going to be like that hamster on the wheel. You know, run, 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 and you never get anywhere. Of course, that's if, you know, everybody's still alive after they uh, have you get your passport, right? And I'm not talking about international travel passport either. I'm talking about the other one. The new one that they come up with. Yeah. So that's why they're going to have to do the Great Reset. They don't want you paying off your bills uh, with uh, worthless money. So they're going to start all over. I hope I explained that. I mean, can you imagine going to Burger King and getting a Whopper for 35 cents? I remember going to um, what was called White Castle, you know, sliders. I remember them being like 10 cents a piece, 10 to 12 cents a piece. You get like, you can get a bag full of them for ten, a dollar. I remember that. And I'd eat every single one of them back then. Yeah. I don't know what they cost now. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, back when we had gold and silver coins, money was worth something. It's not worth anything anymore. So, And this has been planned for a long time. You know, the Federal Reserve Act of 19... I think it was 14. Right after they did that, they... Uh, we had World War I so that the bankers could lend us the money for fighting, a, fighting and killing our own people over in Germany. Yeah. And then about 30 years later, they took all the gold coins in 1934. And then 30 years later in 64, they took all the silver coins. Back when a candy bar was a nickel. At 7-Eleven. The most expensive place you could buy a candy bar. And they were big. They were bigger than they are now. I remember me and my buddy, we'd go to the 7-Eleven and buy a quarter's worth of candy and go to the movie. And get sick eating all that candy. Yeah. Now what's a candy bar? $1.85, something like that. That's how worthless the money has become. Oh, no, inflation's the price of goods going up. No, it's not, you liar. It's the value of the money going down. But they don't want you to know that. Once you know that, that's, uh, yeah, they'll do anything to hide that from you. Absolutely do not want you to know that. So, But that's why they're going to have to do the Great Reset. Because they don't want to have to call everybody's loans and Everybody getting kicked out of their homes and taking their rifle and running to the bank and uh, stringing up the thieves, you know. Because you know what? Uh, the police are going to be in the same boat, you know. You think, you think the police are going to protect the bankers if the police all lost their homes too? No, no. They're not, you know. So they're going to have to do the Great Reset. Yep. The Great Reset. We're gonna we're gonna turn the computer off and reboot it, and start all over. And uh, you're gonna be the hamster on the wheel. That wheel's gonna be turning, 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 but you ain't gonna go nowhere. So, and for those of you that don't think that the Mark of the Beast will be a chip, something to consider. Smart ID, your real ID, uh, you know, the Department of Homeland Security has your driver's licenses uh, where you got to prove your identity. Those real ID uh, with the star on the driver's license, they have a chip in them. 
Your credit card, your Visa and your MasterCards have a chip in them. ATM cards, your, your debit cards have a chip in them. Your passport has a chip in them. What happens the day that the government and the bank say, you know what, why do we have all these different chips? Let's just put everything into one. Your banking and your government identification all in one little deal. And to make sure that you can't lose your wallet with your card in it, we'll put it, the chip in your hand. And I don't claim to be a prophet, but I'm telling you what. When I came to the Lord in 1989, in 1990 or 90, I think it was 1990, I asked the Lord what the, the um, Mark of the Beast was after I'd finished reading the Bible for the first time. And there it was in the newspaper, a uh, nice Jewish doctor, a veterinarian, giving a dog a microchip. I thought, wow. Now, I'm not saying that was the Lord's answer, but it could be just a coincidence. But I think it is going to be a chip. I really do. I mean, it fits. I mean, let's face it. There's people who don't even carry cash anymore. Oh, I just tap the app on my phone. Boom, it's paid, you know. You can lose your phone, but you can't. How are you going to lose your hand? If it's in your hand, how are you going to lose your hand if they put a chip in it? You know, somebody can cut your hand off, but, you know, you're going to bring somebody's bloody hand to the bank and say, hey, I want to withdraw this money. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be a little hard to do, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, I don't know. Just some thoughts. And I'm not saying I'm right, but. You know what? For the first time in the history of the world, they could put all the money, supposedly, well, if you call it money, in the banking system, on the cloud, and access with, with a little microchip computer. First time in the history of the world. Do you know that uh, up until about a hundred years ago, you didn't even need a passport to go to another country. I think it was uh, about a hundred years ago. What did passports come into being? I'm gonna have to look that up. But uh, you know, well, modern passports as we know them uh, started around a hundred years ago. So yeah. All right, everybody, um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus. Um, I don't think this vaccine thing is going to be the mark of the beast, but it'll probably be used as a precursor, a conditioner to get you used to it. I don't know. But, uh, and the you-know-who say their Messiah has uh, appeared. I don't know. Their Messiah. Not mine. My Messiah came about 2,000 years ago. What can I tell you? And he's going to come back one day and he's going to whip some booty. Oh, yeah. So, all right. All glory to Jesus. Amen.